Coming up on Cultural Capital, we're at the Hayward Gallery to see their brilliant exhibition in The Black Fantastic. Thing of the Week is a very handsome portrait that was lost for more than 130 years, and I'll be trying not to sob my way through a review of a children's movie, The Railway Children Return. The Hayward Gallery's new exhibition, In the Black Fantastic, is a glorious, glittering display of work by artists of colour who span continents and generations, but whose way of seeing brings them together. We headed down to talk to its curator, Echo Eschen. In the Black Fantastic brings together 11 artists from the African diaspora who are all drawing on myth and speculative fiction as a way to grapple with the racialized everyday. We're standing inside of my installation that's called Epistrophe. It's basically a piece that's about trying to invite people to think about the, their relationship to mundane objects as well as maybe exotic objects and also relations of scale. There are these CCTV cameras um, that are pointed at objects on the table, but if you look at the table and, and you look at the projections, they're really, really different experiences of the same time and space. I actually think what's wonderful about the show is that um, it's so many different artists with a range of um, sort of like practices and materials sort of all using um, the techniques of the speculative to arrive at new proposals for how to live or how to be. And I think that's really exciting. It's an honor to be in the show with all these other wonderful artists. These are artists that are aware that race itself is an idea, is a socially constructed fiction. There's no scientific basis to race, but nevertheless, race still has a defining hold on the way we live and the way we see the world. These artists use that fiction as an impetus to create their own fictions. Quite how Margaret Gillies' portrait of a young Charles Dickens, created around the time he was writing A Christmas Carol, got into a house sale in Peter Maritzburg in South Africa in 2018 is a bit of a mystery, but it's our thing of the week. This is a watercolour miniature of Charles Dickens, painted by Margaret Gillies in 1843. That was the same year that Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol. So he's in his early 30s at this point, and as you can see, he's very different from the grizzled old man we typically think of when we think of Dickens. In this, he's clean-shaven and he's got long, glossy locks, um, which I think is really great at capturing a youthful Dickens. Um, this painting actually went missing, which is why we call it the Lost Portrait. Margaret Gillies actually reported in 1880 that she'd lost sight of it and didn't know where it was. But it actually turned up again in 2017 in South Africa, in an attic covered in kind of other bits and bobs and sadly it was actually covered in mould at that point but it was actually restored and now it looks like this and uh, visitors get to come and see it in all of its glory. Now for the 60 second film review. Anyone who's watched the original 1970 film of the Railway Children will know it's basically impossible to get through without making use of your hanky and literally within minutes of this sequel, a story of wartime child evacuees, I was blubbing along with their mother at the station. The Railway Children Returns is set 40 years after the original in 1944 with Bobby, played by Jenny Agatha, still with that luminous smile, now a grandmother. Three Manchester siblings, Lily, Patty and tiny adorable Ted, have been sent away to the country for safety and end up cramming into the house with Bobby and her family. Family. Fathers, as you might expect, are absent. The kids get along famously, but the American GIs filling the Yorkshire town are another matter. Bound by US segregation laws, the black soldiers, welcomed by the locals, are being abused by their own officers and harassed by the military police. When the kids discover one of them hiding out in the railway yard, they have to make some difficult decisions. I mean, look, this is a gentle, likeable kids' adventure about standing up for what's right. But it's also a well-thought-out homage to an adored classic, and it'll have parents quietly sobbing into their popcorn. Thanks for watching Cultural Capital. For more great things to do in London, follow me and The Evening Standard on TikTok and ES Culture on Instagram. See you next week. <laughs>